I would like to talk about a project of ours today, uh, the Haiku Towers and the meaning behind them. As humans, we are driven by a desire to construct meaning. We make meaning through the creation and interpretation of signs. And signs take the, word, take the form of words, images, sounds, or objects. According to Saussure, um, a French linguist and semiotician, a sign is composed of a signifier and the signified. The signifier is the form of the sign, and the signified, the concept it represents, or its meaning. So if you read the word tree, the image of a tree comes up in your mind. Or the cross, two intersecting lines that came to be used as the symbol for Christianity. The Eiffel Tower, built in the, uh, for the 1889 World Fair, uh, which came to be a global and cultural uh, image and symbol for Paris and for France. So when designing the Haiku Towers, our aim was to go beyond an architecture of mere function and form, but to construct an architecture of meaning. We tried to integrate all the defining parameters of the design in a way that they would be mutually dependent. The question of the meaning of architecture is especially pressing in China. Never in human history has there been a condition compared to what is going through uh, in China at the moment. Urbanization, which took place over a period of several decades in Europe and North America, is happening in just a few years here in China. This is a satellite view of the Pearl River Delta in 79, uh, I'm sorry, here, uh, and in the early 2000s. So in merely 35 years, Shenzhen has grown from a tiny border town into a multi-million metropolis. But what about the meaning of architecture in such a rapidly developing society? Ram Kolhas once coined the term of the generic city. He said that in China, the generic city isn't planned, it just happens. Because its past is too small to inhabit. Indeed, the breakneck speed of urbanization and growth entail the risk of losing the place, the identity, and its culture, rendering cities unrecognizable from their appearance just a generation ago. It may be true that the immediate past of China is too small to inhabit, but the roots to its rich ancient culture are all the deeper. China is one of the world's oldest cultures. It traces back thousands of years. Many teachings and ideals from the past are still alive in the minds of people uh, today. So the challenge is to bridge the gap between the ancient local cultures and the new contemporary identities. And as architects, we have to attempt to find a corresponding aesthetic. Not by adding or citing historical elements. This is the Beijing West Railway Station with a traditional pagoda roof uh, on top. And not by copying Western lifestyles and architectures. This is a one-to-one -one replica of the Austrian village uh, of Hallstatt in China and a lady wearing the corresponding uh, clothes. Or a picture that has been taken on the outskirts of Hangzhou with copies of Parisian townhouses and uh, an Eiffel Tower in the back. What we are witnessing today is the search of a new collective identity. The pieces of the puzzle do not fit together yet opening a window for architects and urban planners to play an active role in this process. As architects, we first have to understand the complexity of the interwoven patchwork of economic, 
political and social dynamics. On this premise, we can propose buildings and master plans that may help crafting a contemporary Chinese culture. The Haiku Towers are located on the island of Hainan in the south of China, uh, usually known as uh, a tourism or holiday destination, Sanya, which is in the south of the island. Haiku is um, the business and cultural center in the north of the island and home to uh, one of China's most rapid, rapidly growing airline conglomerates, Hainan Airlines. The Haiku Towers are projected to become the heart of the new CBD, uh, which was envisioned from a blank slate, uh, this entire uh, development. It is the site of the former Haiku Airport. Here you can see uh, the runway, uh, which makes its owner, Hainan Airlines, uh, one of the main uh, driving forces behind uh, the development of the CBD. This picture was taken um, during the competition in 2011, um, where we were literally confronted with uh, a greenfield. One of the few buildings on the main road was uh, the headquarter building uh, of Hainan Airlines uh, in this very um, yeah, characteristic um, Buddha shape. The company's leader is a devout Buddhist and committed to traditional values. Buddhism is also quite present in the local culture of the island. This is a statue that is uh, close to Sanya in the very south. So the understanding of the local culture and the social context was, uh, uh, was key for the design of this project. Uh, and we felt that especially uh, the Buddhist um, faith was an important influencing factor. While avoiding any direct iconography, we reflected upon the fundamental principles and ideals of the religion. Buddhist art and architecture frequently makes use of particular sets of symbols. So for example, the wheel here representing knowledge, the number of eight is quite important, or uh, the endless knot uh, representing eternal harmony, the idea that everything is connected to everything. Uh, there's a constant flow uh, and a continuity. Or uh, the lotus flower representing purity and enlightenment. Uh, the lotus flower actually takes roots in the mud and then grows through the water to blossom uh, into a flower, uh, kind of signifying the progress of the human soul, if you do it right. These principles were architecturally abstracted uh, and find their references in the geometric language and sp spatial articulation of the building. At the same time, the form and structure of the tower have been directly informed by the program requirements and the drive for an efficient structural scheme. Eight inclined mega columns define the primary structure of the tower. The program is separated into two, uh, offices at the lower part of the tower and hotels on the upper one. And for offices, you usually want long floor spans, uh, column-free spaces, so uh, we pushed the structure to the perimeter. And for the hotel, you would like to have unobstructed views uh, for uh, the hotel guests, so uh, the structure is kind of folding, uh, folding inwards. The silhouette of the tower can be traced uh, with one continuous curve, giving the tower a very kind of dynamic, uh, but at the same time balanced appearance. When seen from above, these curves are reminiscent of a lotus flower. The four leaves are the projection lines of the eight mega columns um, that are slightly curved, which you can see, uh, which you can see here. The tower is framed by two plinth buildings and embedded in a lush tropical landscape with large water pools. The tower tip is fully transparent and brings down natural light into the void and provides for maximum views from the observation deck. When the tower hits the ground, 
the structure is pushed into the four corners to provide space for one big column free um, entrance lobby. The main entrances um, lead centrally here, south and north, to the offices, Soho and Hotel from left and right. And then um, you basically start to spread onto three different levels uh, to access your respective elevator bank. This is a view um, looking onto the main entrance. Um, these three levels, um, or four actually, uh, are all interconnected uh, through a vertical void to provide for maximum visual connectivity. This is um, a section where you can see the program breakdown. So commercial functions in the plinth, office, Soho, uh, the hotel lobby, the actual hotel, and the observation uh, deck on top. The 10th floor, um, a typical floor um, for the offices, uh, very deep and open spaces, and uh, the structure pushed to the perimeter. Higher up, the 35th floor, uh, the Soho um, apartments, um, you can see nicely now how the tower transitions from a, from a square uh, to a circular plan. And then further up on the 68th floor, um, the hotel lobby, um, where we're back to a square, only rotated by 45 degrees. And uh, the central core um, is now split into four, um, opening up um, space for a vertical atrium and 360 views uh, over the city. So that's the kind of view when you step uh, out of the elevator uh, and approach uh, the reception desk. Um, so we imagine this as a very open um, uh, and light space, almost like a marketplace, um, where you could see uh, up uh, into, the, uh, into the hotel rooms, uh, you could see uh, the sky, uh, but also an amazing view out uh, to the city. The hotel rooms which are organized around uh, the central void. And then uh, the tower tip uh, with the observation deck. The tropical climate of Hainan called for an intelligent and performative building envelope to minimize the impact on the building's energy consumption. This is a diagram that visualizes the solar impact on the building. The facade is designed to react to the different sunlight conditions depending on the orientation to the sun. So um, we have two panels. One is opaque and one is transparent. Uh, and the opaque one is folding out according to uh, the intensity of the sunlight. So um, altogether, I think we have eight different panels uh, that kind of seamlessly transform from one condition to another kind of making the tower look different uh, from, every, uh, from every angle. This is a facade detail showing uh, a part of the southern facade with a beautiful three-dimensional effect, interesting play uh, of light and shadows. The second stage of the competition uh, actually comprised more than one tower, but it was an ensemble of 10 towers ranging from 150 meters to 450 meters height, with an overall area of 1.5 million square meters. The urban master plan was inspired by a stylized image of two Buddha hands. That was actually a speci specification given to us by the client. These are drawings of Buddha hands describing different gestures and their meaning. We propose two series of towers, taking the height of the surrounding buildings and culminating in two high points. At the ground level, the towers are framing a big central plaza outlined by an undulating podium with commercial facilities. The public realm between podium and boulevard expands with lush green spaces and water basins.
The tower designs were all based on the DFA, DNA of the main tower. They transition from the orthogonal city grid to the rotated, more expressive form of the main tower. And all the buildings are connected below and above ground to form one continuous interconnected whole. Seen from afar, the ten towers are creating uh, a unique skyline, but at the same time blend quite nicely into the city context, both at day and at night. And this is where we are today, five years after. The main tower, uh, the south tower, is under construction, and you can see how the city uh, has grown uh, since then. This is uh, H&A's uh, headquarter building. All of these buildings did not exist when we first went there. We have been through a long process of optimization, especially the structure has been very challenging since Haiku is located in one of the most seismic regions of China and part of the typhoon belt. So we had to deal with um, both of these um, forces. And yeah, I have to say this was a joint effort now also of all the consultants from Arab to Tomasetti uh, who supported uh, us here. Um, this was the wind tunnel test and um, here you can see the shaking table uh, in Beijing with uh, a 1 to, 20, um, 1 to 20 scale model. For me it's always uh, still uh, surprising to see that some of these things you have to do uh, somehow manually and you can't, you can't calculate it or process it in a computer. Um, currently there is excavation and piling. Altogether there are more than 240 piles that reach up uh, to 100 meters into the ground. Uh, here you can see how the rebars for the piles are being welded together on site. So these long things. Uh, to be then slid into the ground and uh, eventually filled uh, with concrete. The North Tower. Um, that's this guy here is currently in uh, design development and both of the towers are scheduled to be completed in 2020. From the outside they look alike, that was intentional, um, they're supposed to be uh, twin towers even though the north tower is one meter higher um, with 429 meters in total. On the inside, many things have changed, offering different sensations uh, for different programs. So coming back to the initial question about the meaning of architecture, I would argue in support of a reciprocal dialogue between economic and functional requirements and the social and cultural dimension of architecture. Usually this is not as easily quantifiable and more abstract, but even as important for a sustainable development of our future cities. In our eyes, architecture is a vehicle to create difference. We are convinced that architecture should take on a social and cultural responsibility. Form should hereby be a strategy against the uniform. It should represent place rather than object. Thank you very much. <laughs>